Greetings and welcome to the 2015 season debut of the Cox Sports Report presenting highlights of high school football action from all over Virginia to you with my new partner Andy Mashaw. I am Matthew Hatfield and Andy, it's a new year, a new set. Welcome aboard. Great to be here, man. I'm excited. We're ready to go. We got all this stuff. Football is back. We got plenty of it. Oh, we are loaded with highlights today, and we'll start things off in the Beach District with the Tallwood Lions playing host to the Lancetown Eagles. Tallwood coming off a win in their last game, coming from behind against Kellum while Lancetown trying to move to 3 0. Lancetown in the white, Tallwood in the purple. We're going to get things started off pretty quickly here. This will be Zuri Carson. Well, we'll get things started pretty quickly after the handshakes. But, you know, we got to get the formalities out of the way here first. All right, here we are. First quarter. Ready to go. Zuri Carson takes the hand off up the middle. Goes up the middle. Still goes up the middle. Still going. Now he breaks it to the outside inside the red zone. Knocked out of bounds there. Setting up a pretty good field position here. So, you know what? Victor Jones says, Zuri, yeah, that was a pretty good run. You know what? Let's not do it again. Big time hit from Victor Jones. And you see the Lansdown defense trying to get a key stand here in the red zone. Now third down and five at the eight yard line for Tallwood. How will the Lions react? It'll be Adrian Wilson going up top to his receiver, Lamar Gilbert, hauling it in for the touchdown snag. And the home team is out in front. They call that a fade route, right? Yeah, he just throws it straight up in the air. That's the big guy. Go get it. Seven nothing on top home team. Now the visiting Eagles here with quarterback Bryson Stooks having to do more than usual because he's got some key players dinged up due to injury. And you see Stooks is a dual threat guy for coach Tommy Riemann. And Tommy Riemann's developed a number of quarterbacks in his tenure. Still the same score all the way to the third quarter until Wilson rolling out, still rolling out, finds Davis down the sideline and he makes the catch. Oh, what a grab there as Tallwood converting some key opportunities, especially on third down to keep drives alive in this game up seven to nothing late in the third quarter, trying to go to that ball control attack. But Lancetown, they've got a playmaker in Stoops. As you see here, a tough run inside the 10 before he's knocked out. And if you've got Bryson Stoops that can get you there, why not let him try to finish off the drive, put the ball in his hands, quarterback keeper up the middle. He'll knife through there for the score. Finally, they get on the board. Defensive struggle all night long in this one, at least in most of the game. There's your score, seven to six, and Stooks not done yet. Two-point conversion for Stooks is good, so Lanstown trailing for much of the way now in front by a whisker. It's eight to seven late in the third period. Still we go, carry up. This is Wilson again over the middle of Albert. Watch him all the way down the field. He's got a touchdown. He's going to score. We're going to, oh, oh, no, the turf monster sneaks up and grabs him. Oh, he thought he was going all the way, but a great game for him and this one. Lamar Gilbert now 8-7. to seven. Tallwood trying to get in front here, and Adrian Wilson's the guy that will have to get him there, throwing the football up top. He's got his man in the end zone right there. Hauling it in is Gilbert again for his second touchdown reception of the evening. No turf monster on that one, that's for sure. He jumps up and makes sure he holds on to it. Stukes now on the quarterback keeper. Lead blocker there, Colby Not in Camper. Give him some kudos as he helps Stukes get into the end zone. And the Eagles now have knotted it up at 14. Don't go for one, go for two. Stukes did it the first time, why not a second? Right now it's the Brandon Stukes show. It is 14-16 is your score. Into the fourth quarter we go. Tallwood now, they've been throwing the football to have success. Let's get something out of the running game. And Breon Mosey will do it. He slips by a couple of defenders and will march all the way in 45 yards for the touchdown. And the Lions giving their home fans something to cheer about. Final score, they're gonna check this one. Let's hold on. Before we get to final score, let's make sure there's no holding. Is there holding? No, nope. no holding. There it is, the final score. 21-16 is the final. Tallwood takes it over Lansdowne. Pick up the flag and go home. Say it's a winner for Tallwood. Now 2-1 responding from that 49-7 loss to Cox in the season opener. You see Wilson and Gilbert connecting twice for touchdowns while Stooks had two touchdown runs. The Eagles falling to 2-1 overall. Well, a pretty got, good start, right? Oh, no question about it. The Beach District had some exciting action all week long, and we're going to see a big, dramatic one coming up here with the Bayside Marlins and the Kellum Knights. Bayside 2-0, Kellum 0-1, and last year it was Bayside rallying Andy from a 20-7 deficit to stun the Knights at the very end, 21-20. Well, we have a similar outcome here. It's Kellum in the black, Bayside in the white to get things going. It is Dante Lampley, the swing pass to Antonio Hibbler. 35 yards later, we get a score. And the Marlins know this has the potential to be a track meet. They had 10 different guys touch the football either on rushes or receptions in this first half for head coach John White. And watch the double counter right here. Oh, a nifty play by those tricky Knights coached by Crystal Witt. Trevon Thorpe will go the distance 35 yards for Kellum to answer. 
tied up in the first quarter, seven all. Would they answer? It is Caleb Brody up the middle, still up the middle, still going, breaking tackles all the way to the. I said the because he's not going to get in. Stopped at the one. Oh, how did he come from behind? Oh, so close, but a breakaway threat. Brody is there for the Bayside running game, and he'll finish off the drive. Why not give it back to him? He deserves that touchdown. 14 to 7, Bayside in the second quarter, and we're not done scoring. Here's Cody Elmer up the middle. I keep saying up the middle, but there's nobody up the middle except for Elmer. Elmer takes off downfield. Big run, and it's going to set up field position. Finally dragged down by defensive back Chris Hunt there and Kellum with that running game again. This time it's the Beast wearing number eight. That's Stephen Copeland. You're not going to tackle him. He's getting by defenders here. Still rumbling as he's going to go 65 yards to Pater. Kellum is on the board again. 14-13. That one made it a 65-yard trucking kind of a run here. This is why it's only 13. Fire call. Extra point, no good. 14-13, Bayside leads it. And that snap could come back to haunt them, or we'll see finding out here later on. It'll be a completion here on the slant pattern. It's cold lace from Justin Glazier. A touchdown from seven yards out for the Knights. Now back in the lead, 19-14, late in the second quarter. Glazier, is he going to go to Dalton again? Is he going to go to Dalton again? He is not going to go to Dalton again. He tries, but it's broken up by Hunt. Second big defensive play by him in this game. And that base that secondary was so many defenders that are talented. You got Phil Patterson going to Virginia Tech. You got Hunt. You got Chris Walker. Just a bunch of guys. Field goal will be good there by Danny Antonelli as Kellum extends its lead to eight. And here's Lampley trying to answer, and it's caught. That is Chris Walker. Breaks a couple of tackles, stays on his feet all the way down to the 21 yard line. Spreading the wealth, that's what that Bayside offense is doing. And Dante Lampley here with the quarterback keeper. He'll find the end zone. Also showing some mobility here besides that arm, which has been pinpoint throughout the first few games of the season. 22-21, Kellum in the lead, but not for long as they hand it off to the freshman, Michael Martinez. Lampley took the first one. He says, all right, we'll share the love. Here's one for Martinez. You take it in this time. But as you see right there, no good on the extra point. There's your score. And that could come back to bite the Marlins. 27-22, and now Kellum back in the lead. It's a back and forth shootout. A seesaw affair. Justin Glazier punching it in from a yard out as Kellum takes the lead 28-27. to The team with the ball last might win this thing. A lot of failed two-point conversions going back and forth here. Those can cost you. What a hit by Stephen Copeland delivering right there. The final play of the game. Here it is, 4.9 seconds to go. Bayside at the 27-yard line. It'll be Lampley stepping up in the pocket, avoiding the rush, and finding his man, Armani Chapman, the sophomore, with an unbelievable diving one-handed snag, and the Marlins win it. They call this climbing the pocket. Escapes the pressure, steps into this throw as Lampley downfield and watch the one-handed, one-handed grab, diving effort, controls it. They say, no, it's not good. Referee says, yep, it's good. And that is a game winner. Great concentration on that and a clutch combination there. Lampley to Chapman. Bayside moves to 3-0, a heartbreaking loss for Kellum, which falls to 0-2. 33-28, you see Lampley with 207 yards through the air, while Kellum was led by Justin Glacier's two touchdowns, one on the ground, one with his arm. A lot of action already. We are ready to keep rolling, though. Here's some more scores from around the Beach District. 38-37, first Colonial over Green running two overtimes. A uh, victory there for the Patriots as they get their first of the season, a non-district matchup. It was Twin Springs defeating the Chilaui Warriors 28-22. Their first victory over Chilaui since 1995 as Holton McNew rushes for 76 yards and a touchdown. Will Clark had 136 yards passing in defeat for Chilaui. And South County over Westfield from the 6A North region, 26-19 your final there. And a big upset, sort of in a way that Westfield was ranked number two in the state. In Group 6A, South County also a top 10 team. And in the Liberty District, it was Madison defeating Stonebridge by a count of 35 to 24 behind Jason Gastrock's three touchdown passes. Kind of busy, are we? We, we are. got more coming up next. We head out west. We'll take a look at Northside and Hidden Valley. Stay with us. Sports Report continues.
Back here with our new digs on Sports Report. He's Andy Mashaw. I'm Matthew Hatfield. Well, Andy, we now go to Dwight Bogle Stadium in Edmonds Hammers Field for a 3A West region matchup. It's the Northside Vikings taking on the Hidden Valley Titans. Northside, a pretty solid team around the state and expected to go far this year. Northside in the white, Valley in the blue. And right off the bat is Ryan Mitchell with the kickoff return. A squibber up the middle. Handles it well. Doesn't get very far, but hey, it's tough to pick one of those dogs up when it's bouncing like that. Hidden Valley's got their sights set on what would be considered an upset, and they get off to a great start. It's Jonah Fitzgerald, the 6'3 sophomore quarterback, finding his man wide open. Alec Dalton, nobody's going to catch him. 71 yards, and the Titans strike first. That's a heck of an arm right there. 71 yards to set it up, and I think you can call that a blown coverage. Uh, indeed, and the extra point will be booted through there for the Titans, giving them that lead at the White Bogle Stadium. And Northside's been a pretty stingy defensive unit led by Carlos Boogie Basham, but the offense is going to have to counter here with their quarterback, Josh Hardister. But uh-oh, he's picked off by Ryan Mitchell. Ryan Mitchell picked off the kickoff, and now he picks off a pass. He's got good hands, a dependable weapon for Hidden Valley there. Now you see Hardister on the keeper, making a guy miss some shake and bake in his arsenal there, as you see. Northside is starting to mount a drive, and they will go down to the special teams unit. A field goal kicked through by Hunter Ashwell from 22 yards out. 7-3 the score right now as we head into the second quarter. And watch this, jet sweep action. Handed off JoJo Wampler from six yards out. Look at the blocking in front. He strings it out, finds the pylon. He gets in. Oh, Big you, score. You know Coach Burt Torrance loves that blocking from the guys up front to get that play done. Well executed as the Vikings are back in the lead. 10-7 now. Another little jet sweep play here. It's going to be Trey Jackson, the junior. He's going to get in the corner there. Touchdown for him. 14-yarder as Northside scores their first series of the third quarter with the double-digit lead now. That worked to the left. Let's do it to the right. Why not? Here's a kickoff, though, and here's that guy again. Mitchell takes it on the hop. Picks it up at the 10, looks for some room, finds a little bit of a gap, cuts it back, and then, uh-oh, runs into some trouble. Runs into a lot of trouble, runs into a lot of white shirts, gets flipped upside down, they carry him back. You don't want to run a touchback, kickoff return back upside down. Not just, not just some hard hitters on that north side defense, but some crisp tacklers on special teams. And this time it'll be Andrew Coons with the touchdown run. North side extending its lead to 17 as Coach Scott Weaver's club needing some answers defensively, but they're not going to find it here as it is Jackson with another touchdown plunge. 31 to 7, still in the third quarter, out of the third quarter. We head to the fourth quarter now, and it's Carson Bennett. And yes, I'm going to say it again, up the middle. This time he breaks it to the outside, picks up good yardage, knocked out of bounds, but it's going to set up this right here. Fitzgerald on the roll and finds his man. Guess who? That's Mitchell. Got flipped upside down on the kick return. This time he stays on his feet and holds onto the ball. Touchdown. And a two-point conversion. We see a two-point conversion. We're going to see a two-point conversion. Fitzgerald this time rolls the other way. And he finds Jake Smiley. Two-point conversion is good, but that is your final. 31 to 15, north side over Hidden Valley. A couple of nice targets with Smiley and Mitchell, but not enough as you see Trey Jackson with two touchdown runs, 92 yards on the ground. Fitzgerald in a losing effort with 209 yards passing and two touchdown strikes through the air. All right, coming up next, stay with us. It's We've got more scores. There we are. Jefferson Forrest next. with Navy Jones, no problem. 245 yards rushing, a touchdown on the ground, a touchdown catch there for them as they defeat Magna Vista, the reigning 3A state champ, 53 to 20. Jacquez Harrison with 81 yards rushing and a touchdown. But that Jefferson offense, lethal. 26 13, the 2A West Division. Grayson County over Taswell. And when we return, don't go anywhere. We've got Hampton and Heritage. And more highlights, including Moy versus Grassfield, right here on Sports Report. Now we can move on, right? Yeah. Welcome back to the Sports Report. Andy Michaud with Matt Hatfield here. We've got more high school football coming. This time, we're going to go to Hampton. And if we're going to Hampton, we're talking about the Crabbers. Yes, we are. Darling Stadium is the place to be as Mike Smith's Crabbers, the program coming off their 800th win all time. More state titles and victories than anybody else taking on the Heritage Hurricanes, coached by former Smith player and assistant George Chubbs Massenburg. All right, Travers in the black, Heritage in the white. Early on going, it's Kamari Hunter not getting a whole lot on the option, so Devon Quillen says, all right, forget the option. We're just going to heave it to him. 
Here's Hunter, wide open, and yeah, they call that blown coverage too. They certainly do, and you see Hunter, a deadly weapon for Javon Bubba Clue, and the quarterback who's committed to play his college football for the Hokies of Virginia Tech. How does Heritage answer? Well, they go to Trayshawn Shackleford, bouncing off defenders here as he's their power back in the backfield, and that'll be a swing pass. Jeremiah Boyd, the junior quarterback, to Brandon Jones, 15-yard score to put Heritage on the board. And it's 6-6 six, six, as both of these teams have issues with extra points. Some of them have problems with kickers, but Hampton back on the attack, and here goes Quillen. Keeps it himself to the outside, picks up a good chunk of yardage, 12 yards on that one. He's not done, though. This time, Quillen fires it over, and that is going to be another first down. And you see Jalen Apple to stop there, but Quillen coming off a season where he just became the third Peninsula District player ever to throw and rush for over 1,000 yards in the same season. And this time, he's showing off the wheels and the mobility Right there as he moves the chains and Hampton's getting closer to the end zone. So this time they will hand it off to Traquan Smith to finish off the drive as that Heritage defense trying to key in on Bubba Quillen. 12 to 12 6 here, score here as we roll on later on. Here's Quillen again. This time 23 yards, avoids the tackle, avoids another one, avoids the pylon line as he gets into the end zone. 23 yard touchdown run, two point conversion. And yeah, we'll take that too. Why not? He's got some nifty footwork too, a two touchdown advantage for Hampton, but Heritage will come roaring back behind the arm of one Jeremiah Boy. This time a completion down the field to Timothy Payne. Hampton's defense feeling that a little bit. Now it'll be Boyd reeling in the high snap on fourth down. He'll find his man, Amanye Watson, for the 14-yard touchdown pass, and Heritage cutting into that deficit. Well, pretty good catches right there. And that'll be Boyd here as they fake the jet sweep and hand it right there to Shackleford. Picks up about four yards there as the Heritage running game starting to find some daylight. And this time, they'll find a lot of daylight. It's Shackleford getting through the next level of the defense. A 28-yard touchdown run to knock things up at 20. That is where we stand at halftime. Kind of an interesting score. Nobody was expecting that. 20 all tied at the half. Quillen comes out. He's going to roll to his right. He's going to keep rolling. He's going to turn it up. He's going to stop rolling. He's just going to pick up yards inside the 20 down to the 12-yard line. When he starts rolling, look out. Hampton's offense is pretty dynamic. This time, Quillen rolling on fourth down, finding his man in the end zone. It's Anton Brown. What can Brown do for you? He reels it in, and he's limping a little bit there. 36 to 20, the Crabbers are starting to pull away. Boyd trying to mount something here. Let's get something going. Fires over the middle. He gets a completion there. Feeling pretty good. We got to get something going. We're going to try it again. Boyd back to throw again. Steps back. Good protection. Fires it. Oh! and that's not going to be complete. It is complete, but it's to Dara Wells, who's wearing a Crabber uniform. And Wells, with the interception, he's going to take off. He's going to keep running. Gets a truckload of blockers. Look at the blocking there. Spin move to the 30, to the 20, to the 10. No more blocking. Cuts it back in. And yeah, we're not going to ruin it for you. He gets all the way in this time. 81 yards on the interception return. And that wraps it up. Hampton, 42 victory over Heritage, 42 to 20. Wells hit that B button on the Maddie video game right there as the Crabbers keep their record unblemished on the air. You see Quillen producing four touchdowns, two rushing, two passing. Jeremiah Boyd also had two touchdown passes for Heritage, but outscored 14 to nil in the second half. So he's not going to Ohio State? No, he's that not. spin move there? Later on in the Peninsula District, it was Kinkatan over Denby, 35 to 13. And you see Casey Vick, a good game running, but not enough for them. Well, the Grassfield Grizzlies at home at Carolyn F. Bernard Stadium playing host to the Maury Commodores. One of only three games out of 22 matchups in Tidewater, Andy, that have undefeated teams record-wise. 1-0 for both of them. Grassfield trying to protect their home turf against the team from Norfolk. A lot of orange out there. Orange hats all the way around. It is Maury, though, in the white jerseys. Grassfield in the blue jerseys. Obviously, they got the big G. That stands for Grassfield, if you hadn't noticed. Early going on, here we are. Justice Big B to Grant Holloway, but Holloway dropped it and is intercepted by Javon Elliott. Keep that mind, keep that name in mind though. Holloway will make up for that. Don't worry. Yes, he will. He was not too happy about letting that go through his mitts right there. And that'll be Maury start the second quarter going to Markel Wood. Nobody's gonna lay the wood on him and just keep him from getting in the end zone. A five-yard touchdown run for the Commodores. They're loving it. The fans that made the trip to Chesapeake, seven to nothing. Maury. But Holloway will get his chance, and here it comes from quarterback Justice Bigby. Now he said keep that name in mind. Little tunnel screen action over the middle. Holloway breaks a couple of tackles. Get, the, get up, get up, just stay away. Holloway, 36-yard touchdown run. Big guy, six foot three. 
and uh, he uses those long arms to keep defenders off of him. Ties it up seven all. He certainly does. He says, shoe fly, don't bother me. He's now released his time, final four. He's got Georgia, Oregon, Florida, and Virginia Tech. Georgia opening, he keeps that G on his helmet and goes there. But the Ducks, the Hokies, and the Gators trying to get him. And now Holloway with some <laughs> nifty maneuvers after the interception here. And now you know Grassville's going to hand it off to Darius Hagans to complement that passing game. He will get through for the touchdown run there from eight yards out as the Grizzlies have gone ahead. 14 to 7 as we head into the second quarter. Defense this time though. Here's Mills dropping back. Mills still dropping back. Then he gets just thrown back by Kevin or Seth Harrell for the sack. Part of that tough defensive line, Seth Harrell, a junior who's a next level recruit. So is senior Patrick Jones. Morey will have to punt deep in its own territory. Uh -oh. And you know Here's who they're guy. punting to? It's Here's Holloway. And he's got the ball in his hands. Long strider. He sees the end zone in his future. Look at the speed. They're going to get down the sidelines with long legs at six foot three, long arms. Watch that. Uh oh. What was that? Was that a block in the back? Was oh. It? oh, it's a block in the back and it's coming back. I see some yellow lawns in the field. Holloway not pleased about that, but you know what? He wants to get one more touchdown before we go to intermission. So it's going to be the favorite out in the corner of the end zone. One handed trick, tipping it to himself and he comes down with it. Touchdown Grizzlies. Just wanted more showtime. That's all that was. But look at the height on this thing. Goes up and gets it. Teammates do that for you. When they know you can do showtime like this, we'll give you a block in the back just so you get another play. And new quarterback Justice Bigley filling in well for Brett Smith who graduated now playing college baseball at ODU. The Grizzlies fans, one of the most passionate, loyal groups in the area. They're on their feet and celebrating. It was a 7-0 deficit, but now it's a big lead for Grassfield and nobody's going to catch this guy, Shawan Goodman, 30 yards to the house. Would there be, uh, no, there's not going to be a comeback. This is Austin Winslow on the interception, 62 yards later. Look, he's still rumbling, running out of gas, gets some good blocking. 62 yards later, interception return for the touchdown. All grasp on this one after Maury uh, upended Norcom in the opener, surprising some folks. And there is Trevor Burns bringing in the pass from Bigby from four yards out. His older brother Drew Burns playing at Virginia Tech now and then give it to the running back, Shawan Goodman, to extend the lead. There's your final. 49 to 15 is the final score. Good effort by Maury to stay up with him early on, but the power of Holloway and just the athletic ability of Grassfield eventually caught up to him. 49 unanswered points after the Grizzlies trailed early in the second quarter. And that one more scores around the Hampton Roads area. It was Deep Creek beating Wilson 14 to 6. D'Angelo Mullen Morrison and Jalen Jefferson with a touchdown run. And kudos to Cynthia Brown for Wilson. Yes, Cynthia, the first female player we believe in VHSL history to throw a touchdown pass. It's off a, off a punt, right? It's a fake punt. Smithfield wins over Bruton 36 13 in the Bay Rivers district. And the Packers bouncing back from their season opening loss to Kings Fork. Greg Dockery with a touchdown pass in defeat for the Panthers of Bruton. Our Cox Sports and Virginia Trophy Player of the Week. Who else but Kalen LeBourne, one of the top juniors in the nation out of Ocean Lakes High School in Virginia Beach. All LeBourne needed was seven carries to rack up 195 yards Good rushing and three. four touchdowns in a seven to nothing trouncing of Princess Anne. And you see why Ocean Lakes is ranked among the top 20 programs in the country. Average per carry approximately 11 billion on that one. Well, we are out of time. Stay tuned next week for another edition of the Cox Sports Report. For Andy Michelle, I'm Matthew Hatfield. We'll see you next time.